Well, if I had uh, three words to describe Malibu, uh, at least as I've known it, oh my God, Malibu. <laughs> I've lived in Malibu since 1961. Uh, actually, uh, I saw Malibu for the first time in 1943. Uh, when my ship put into Port Wanimi for repairs, I, I had been uh, aboard ship about a year and uh, as the ship was docked at the, uh, for repairs, uh, the, sh uh, the ship's uh, jeep was parked on the dock, so I grabbed hold of the uh, captain's yeoman and said, give me the keys. And he said, sir, I have to get permission from the captain. I said, the hell with the captain, give me the goddamn keys. So I took the keys and drove off. I stopped at the gate, uh, Port Wanim, and I said, where are the broads? In those days, broad was a, a nice word, not a bad word now. <laughs> he said, well, I tell you, you go to Malibu, the guide said, uh, you'll pr probably find some broads there. So uh, I headed off in that direction, uh, and uh, I stopped at uh, a Sunoco station where uh, there is now a, uh, a Union 76, and I said, fill it up. And the guy said, uh, I'm sorry, but you gotta have a coupon. I said, fill the goddamn car up. He said, yes, sir. The uh, the restaurant uh, uh, that is now there was at that time a bait shop. So I stopped in the bait shop. I said, give me a beer. He said, sir, this is a bait shop. So I said, all right, well, I'll take a beer anyway. <laughs> I was about to go out there. He's just a minute, sailor, he says. So he pulled a uh, beer out of his refrigerator and gave it to me. He said, uh, keep up the good work, he said, sonny. <laughs> So I said, uh, where are the broads around? He said, I, well, he said, you might go to Malibu Colony. So I drove down to Malibu Colony. As I was driving, I thought, what a beautiful place this is. I'm going to live here. At that time, there was no Chinese wall, no uh, buildings that uh, prevented uh, anybody from looking at the ocean. And so all these fat cats who live here now think that the ocean and the beaches belong to them. So at that time, uh, there were no trees and a complete uh, view of the ocean everywhere you drove along PCH. I got to Malibu Colony, and of course, uh, the guy said, uh, you can't come in. <laughs> so I headed back to the ship, uh, and I got back aboard, and the guy said, uh, what'd you do, Cooper? I said, there ain't any broads in Malibu. Anyway, uh, that, uh, that stuck in my mind uh, at the time. I decided that this is the place I'm going to live and build a house someday if I, ever get back, if I ever get back alive. At that time, uh, after having been in four or five battles, my chances of, re of returning, I thought, were pretty slim at the time. But I, I did come back, and uh, Alberta, my late wife, and I looked around all over the place and finally we decided uh, that Malibu was going to be our home, and it was. She was a PhD candidate at the University of Michigan, and uh, I was a part-time lecturer at the University of Michigan also. Uh, I was working for an organization called the Michigan Municipal League, which is the counterpart in California of the California League of Cities. Oh. I was the assistant director of the League, of the Michigan League, and also a charter consultant. So. It gave me a good uh, insight into uh, the workings of, uh, of local government uh, as a result. Anyway, Alberta uh, uh, decided she would uh, marry me. I never understood why. <laughs> After I quit my job uh, in the league and uh, went to another organization, I proposed to her by phone, and she said, well, I better think about this. <laughs> she was pretty smart. <laughs> So uh, we finally settled down in Malibu, and uh, uh, it was a good price for a house. Uh, I spent a, a lot of money, $30,000, uh, for the house we now live in. Uh, <laughs> and I figured, well, uh, I couldn't get a, as good a house as this or anywhere else. And this is where we raised our family. All of our kids went to school here, all five. Here's some, uh, here. Blackberries, right off the vine. At this time, I was working uh, uh, 40 hours plus a week uh, on Malibu Township Council or in city business, 
But I wanted to take the time, uh, uh, even though it uh, deprived me of uh, making, uh, earning a living for family, I, I wanted to be goddamn sure that uh, Malibu became the community, remained the community that Alberta and I had wanted to live in. I, I'm, I'm very worried about what's happening. The Malibu that I remember from 1942, 1943, and indeed 1961 uh, is long gone, unfortunately. And I'm watching Malibu, the Malibu that I and so many other people love, being destroyed by uh, selfish commercial interests that are taking over our town. I see a burgeoning of a whole swarm of commercial developments taking place in Malibu, which, which makes me both angry and angry and scared, of, not just as angry as hell, that this is continuing. You know, uh, I look back on all of the people, including myself, of course, who worked so hard to make Malibu a city and free of the, uh, of the, uh, the clutches of the, in the county government. Uh, and now I see that we're doing more damage to ourselves uh, than the county did. That's the worst part. Of it. And I see one obscene development after another. My greatest uh, memory of uh, Malmo, the fondest one, is all the wonderful people who live here. Really, really delightful people. And I couldn't have asked for a community where there are more interesting people that I have never met in my life, quite like those that I've, I've had here among my good friends and acquaintances in Malibu.